This past semester, I had the pleasure of interviewing a school counselor from Edsel Ford High School in Dearborn City, Michigan. This school counselor has been working at Edsel Ford High School for the past two years. Edsel Ford High School has 1,378 students from 9th to 12th grade. In, 2000, in 2013, they were listed as a priority school. What this means is they were in the bottom 5% of a top to bottom list of all public schools in Michigan. If you are labeled a priority school, you are then mandated to implement a redesign initiative. During this redesign initiative, they had reconfigured the counseling department, and that was when Ms. Mohammed was hired, the school counselor that I had interviewed. Fortunately, by 2016, they were removed from the bottom 5%. However, there are still concerns that we need to address in Edsel Ford High School. One of those concerns is student performance on state tests. So this means academic proficiency. The, this graph shows the percent of students meeting academic standards, scoring proficient or advanced on state tests, such as the MSTEP, the Michigan Access, and the SATs. So in the orange here, it's a state average, whereas the green here is the Edsel Ford High School student scores. We can see on this chart that firstly, the Edsel Ford High School is scoring below state average, 6% below here. We can also notice that they are decreasing through the years. So this is a red flag. The next thing we have to do is evaluate what kinds of subject areas and what kind of demographics we can identify that are struggling in the school. We see here that in all students for English language arts, um, student performance is not so much of a concern because they are still scoring 2% above state average. However, they did decrease from their 2014-2015 scores considerably. However, when we look at their mathematics student performance on state tests, that is where the concern lies. So we see firstly that they have decreased over the years and secondly that they are 15% below the state average. So then we can look at what kind of student demographics we need to address and what um, from here we can figure out how we can address those students. So we found that Black and Hispanic students are scoring at proficiency level or advanced on state tests. However, the white demographic is struggling. This may be due to the fact that the Arab population here identifies on school tests as white. However, a lot of them are English language learners and are not um, proficient in English as their first language. We see here that ELL learners are scoring 20% less on state tests than their state average counterparts. We also see from the accountability master list taken from the Michigan Department of School of Education from the year 2016 to 17 that only 45.9 of their proficiency target was met. That means that's less than half. So what do we do? As counselors, we can try to implement a tiered system, a response to intervention system. This system is three tiers and they're according to what the students need. So the first tier here is 80 to 100% of students. So this tier is meant to be proactive and preventative and really cover most of the students in the school building. Tier two is meant to cover about 20% of students in which tier one was not sufficient for. And tier three is meant to cover 5% or less of students. And it's really very individualized and intensive in their services. So Tier one interventions, what does that look like? So at Ford High School, when they implement their redesign, they actually added a seventh hour for all students. So every student had to stay an hour later, which is an extra class really. And they implemented a silent sustained reading program, which forces students to stop everything they're doing for 20 minutes a day and read at the same time. So this is a proactive intervention However, we need to address math interventions. As we can see from the data, needs a little bit of help, right? So what counselors can do is they can go into staff meetings and train staff on how to integrate math fluency exercises in classes. So that doesn't only have to be math classes. It could be science classes. It could be 
ELA classes, English language arts classes, and their nonfiction writing. Um, it could be any relevant class. So one way we can do that is implement the academic intervention planner, which is for educators. Now this planner designed by Jim Wright is meant to help integrate tier interventions into lesson plans. So one of the examples is like peer pause um, math competency math competency exercises. And so teachers can easily integrate these math fluency exercises into their lesson plans. Another thing counselors can do is go into classrooms and present a study skills presentation. This presentation will also have translation for students that are um, ELL. And these are basically 10 to 15 minutes study skills presentations based on evidence of um, really productive and um, successful study skills. Tier two interventions is for 20% 20, 20 of students who are struggling. So how do we identify those students? Well, we can use data such as GPA or SAT scores or even their grades in their grade books. So Edsel Ford High School actually implemented a lunch study hall in their redesign. However, we can add to that by putting extra study halls during extracurricular hours in which they can get tutoring services by contracting tutoring services to school sites to help students actually get extra help that they need. And a translator should also be there in those hours so that um, it, they can help ELL students. Counselors can also address students by having once a week organizational study groups. So these are specific study groups with specific students that are struggling. They can be referred to this group or they can be identified through data. And um, another tier two intervention is having SST meetings, which are student support meetings between parents and teachers and counselors and administration to really put in place an action plan for the student. Dual enrollment should be encouraged for students, and that would be addressing two types of students, gifted students who would like early exposure to college classes and struggling students who would maybe need some credit recovery. AP classes can also be promoted um, for students who are gifted. And so when those students are moved into higher level classes, the academic gap in gen ed classes are smaller, so the quality of education should be more. Another tier two intervention that school counselors can do is provide parental and or um, guardian workshops to help really support the child at home through evidence based practices such as how to help the child organize, um, how to help the child make sure they're doing their homework and how to find um, the best study environment for the child at home. And in those workshops, they can be done once a semester and a translator should also be present at those workshops so parents from ELL students can benefit. Lastly, tier three interventions can be taken place for students who need that individualized rigorous intervention. So these will look like IEP plans for special education students, 504 accommodations, and um, they, these students can be identified through two, two ways. So they can move up the tiered system that we talked about. So they can move up from tier one to tier two, and then finally to tier three if tier two is not working for them, or they can be identified through the discrepancy model, which means their scores are so far away from the average that they um, are moved from tier one all the way to tier three interventions. Um, the student may also benefit from wraparound services, which means agencies and teachers and family members and um, other types of providers really envelop the child in support to make sure that they're addressed in every single way possible. Um, referrals also fall into tier three interventions for students that may need clinical therapy, or they may need behavioralist attention, or they may even need to be moved to a facility that could, um, or a type of school that could really address the best way for the student. So these are tier, tier interventions to really help um, the academic progress for Edsel Ford High School. Thank you.